This is part 62 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to make an ASP.NET web service return JSON data and then consume that JSON data using jQuery Ajax. We will be working with the same example that we worked with in part 61, so please watch part 61 before proceeding. There are two approaches to make an ASP.NET web service return JSON data and consume it using jQuery Ajax. With approach 1, the web service code does not change in any way. Only the jQuery code changes. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. Notice that at the moment, the type of data that we are getting back from the server is XML. So the callback function that is associated with this success function receives that XML data. We are retrieving the name, gender, and salary property values and displaying them in the respective text boxes. Now what we want to do is change this jQuery code so that it's going to force the web service to return JSON data instead of XML. So the first change that I'm going to do is introduce content type option. So basically, I'm going to set this option to application forward slash JSON and I'm also going to specify character set and I'm going to set that to UTF-8. So basically, this content type is telling that we are going to send JSON string to the server. So the type of data we will be sending to the server. So the content type option here is telling that we are sending JSON string to the server. That means we will have to convert this object, this JavaScript object that we are sending to the server to a JSON string. And to do that, I'm going to use json.stringify method. So this function is going to convert this JavaScript object to a JSON string. So now the type of data that we are expecting from the server is JSON. So change data type option to JSON. Now, an important thing to keep in mind is that the JSON object returned by the web service will have a property called D attached to that. So if you want to retrieve name property value, you can't simply use data.name. You will have to use data.d.name because by default, the JSON object returned by the web service will have that property D attached to it, right? So what we will be getting back is a JSON object. So this data will be a JSON object. And to retrieve name property value, I need to use data.d.name. Similarly, if you want gender, data.d.gender. And finally, salary, data.d.salary. All right, so let's save the changes. Let's go ahead and reload our page. And let's pass employee ID 1. Look at that. We get employee 1 details. Let's pass employee 2. And we get employee 2 details. All right. So here is the code that we just worked with. And if you want to see the JSON object returned by the web service, we can use Fiddler tool. So if you look at this last request here, notice that we have made a request to get employee by ID. And look at the data that we are getting back. We are getting a JSON object back. And notice we have got that letter D, I mean property D, attached to the JSON object returned. With approach 2, both the web service code and the jQuery code need to change. So first, let's see how the web service needs to change. So we have the web service here. At the moment, you know, we are returning the employee object, right? So what we are going to do is actually convert this employee object to a JSON string and write that to the response stream. That means we will not be returning anything from the function. So let's go ahead and set the return type of the function to void. And instead of returning the employee object, I'm going to convert this to a JSON string using the JavaScript serializer class. And this JavaScript serializer class is present in a different namespace. So let's go ahead and bring that namespace in. System.web.script.serialization. So now let's create an instance of JavaScript serializer class. And this class has got serialize method. So to this, let's pass the employee object. 
So what is this function going to do? It's going to convert that object to a JSON string. And what do we want to do with that JSON string? We want to write it to the response stream. So context.response.write. That's it. So what is this web service going to do? It's going to return a JSON string now. So let's go ahead and build the solution. Let's actually view this web service in the browser. So this web service now should return a JSON string instead of XML. So let's pass employee ID 1, invoke, and look at that. What we get back is a JSON string. And the important thing to notice here is the JSON string that is returned now does not contain that property D, right? So now let's go ahead and look at the changes that we need to make to our jQuery code. So now we don't have to use this content type anymore. Since we are not using the content type, there is no need to stringify this JavaScript object. We can send that JavaScript object to the server as is. And what we are getting back is JSON. But you have just seen the JSON string that we are getting back does not have that property D attached to it. So that means we don't have to use this D property anymore. So we can simply use D dot, uh, I mean data dot name, data dot gender, and data dot salary. All right. So those are all the changes. Let's go ahead and build this solution. Let's reload our HTML page one, provide an employee ID three in this case maybe. Look at that, we get that employee details. So here are the jQuery code changes. Thank you for listening and have a great day.